Hey, hey, podcast listeners, welcome back to What You're Reading, the podcast where I connect with fellow book enthusiasts to chat about our latest reads, the topics that fuel our bookish obsession, and all those things that keep us glued to those pages. If you are listening to this current episode, that means that you loved what you heard in episode number seven with our guest Chanel, and you are back to hear our extra bonus content. If you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, then I'm going to ask you to pause here, go listen to episode number seven first, and then come back to this one. Anytime I sit down and chat about books with my girlfriends, we always go off on these little side tangents. Well, that's what this episode is about today. You're going to hear a little bit more about the side conversations that Chanel and I had during our recording time. So again, this episode is the bonus content. The main content, the meat of the conversation that we talked about can be found in the main episode and that will be linked in the show notes. I do want to give a quick warning here that we do briefly discuss a few topics that could be sensitive to some listeners. We talk about walking with Christianity and the Christian faith, as well as covering grief, the loss of a parent or a loved one. So if those topics are sensitive to you, please check the show notes for this specific episode. I have time stamped where we're talking about those things. You can skip right over it. Okay, let's get into it. Big Magic is legit my favorite adult book, but If you had asked me favorite book of all time, like if the question had been posed just a little Ah. bit differently, we'd have been talking about Flowers in the Attic. Life-changing. Life-changing for so many reasons. Not because the book is, it's not supposed to be this way. It's not going to lead me into a a Christ-centered awakening. (laughs) (laughs) But I think so many people who fell in love with literature did so at a time in our lives Mm. where we were needing to be explained to ourselves and we needed a reflection and we needed to know that somebody else feels as out of place in this very typically developing way. That's, that's what adolescence is. That's Mm -hmm. what pre-adolescence is, is identity versus autonomy. Like I want to be who I am and I need autonomy in order to do that. And these two are in opposition with each Mm. other and so definitely not a young adult book I don't think I try you know I'm trying to think about giving this to my 12 year old who Mm -hmm. can read circles around Mm -hmm. many adults that I know but I think it speaks to the the adult who who was can who hasn't forgotten what Mm -hmm. that stage of life is like because I think some adults forget especially parents it's like the rules are somehow different Mm-hmm. But um, if you or can your remember... expectations, like I think one of my frustrations when I see um, either, you know, I was I'm not currently, but I was really, really connected to my church and, you know, my mm-hmm. teen years mm-hmm. and, you know, into my early 20s and working with um, the young adult ministry um, and the youth ministry. And like one of my things that I always push the adults like is hello. And maybe because I wasn't as far removed, but remember mm-hmm. Remember, Remember what it was like. I was the teen who was like, <laughs> got in trouble on a magic mountain trip when we went to Six Flags Magic Mountain because I decided to take my Six Flags cup into Jack in the Box and fill it up and like have them scream at me because I'm technically stealing soda. You're like, stealing what soda. What do you mean? I'm just getting a refill. Like, and they're like, but you're not at Magic Mountain anymore. Like, you can't just come in here. And take the soda. So like when, like I, you know, okay, oops, mistake. Wasn't thinking like now that you say that it makes sense. But like now you're yelling at a kid who's like, you know, having maybe a hard time at home. And, you know, they don't want to sit in this service because they have a lot going on in their mind. And so they're hanging out in the bathroom and you're screaming at them and like, they're not doing anything wrong. They're not doing anything wrong. Like, so that right there, what you said, like really like, ignite yep. like a fire in me because it's like we expect kids to use the same brain that we have when they don't have that they don't have they don't have it is they don't like so we have to remember on some level to give you know mm-hmm. some grace to them or steer them in the right direction so i absolutely resonate with that and i think more adults need to remember what it was like 
growing up. And we forget so easily. And we also, I teach child development, child and adolescent development. And this is one of the things that I try and connect my students back to their former selves the whole semester, because it's really easy to look down in judgment on parents and Mm -hmm. children um, and forget that you were that age and stage as well, but also that we are always expecting children to have it more together than Mm -hmm. we do. Like somebody knocks their cup down and we don't want them to cry. They spill something or they get told no, and we don't want them to be upset they forget something and we ask them, you know, what's wrong with them. Like, first of all, I got seven reminders for everything Mm -hmm, in my phone. mm -hmm. I'm going to forget if somebody knocks into me at Starbucks and makes me late, I'm going to be upset. Mm -hmm. Like we want children to be more emotionally regulated than we are. And, um, I think this topic we could talk about forever, but also they're, they're grappling with things maturity wise that, um, it's their, it's their first time Mm -hmm. and none of us know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. So a lot of grace in this area, but I feel like we could, we, yeah, we could could totally, well, and I'm sure there's some (laughs) listeners out there that have, you know, kids or have seen this and work with youth and stuff like that. So absolutely. But I want to circle back really quick to, it's not supposed to be this way because the full title continues and it says finding unexpected strength when disappointments leave you shattered. And, you know, just being very honest, I've had a very interesting walk journey these last couple of years Mm -hmm. with my relation, distancing my relationship with church and my relationship with God. Um, But that right there, I haven't seen a book that has made me like a a Christ-centered book or a faith book that has made me want to pick anything up. But that statement, finding unexpected strength, Mm-hmm. when disappointments leave you shattered. And if we haven't all been through something disappointing that has made us grieve, like I'm getting chills thinking yeah. about this. This is going to go on my TBR list. It needs to. She writes some amazing books, JJ. She's got another one. Um, so in my church, we have a women's ministry and our women's ministry is not like the kind that you see on the Southern movies where they're like sitting around drinking tea and eating sandwiches and gossiping and then saying like, bless her heart. Our, our women's pastor does not play. There is no food. Eat at home. Like the, this is the, this is the food like eat from, she's mm-hmm. so serious about women, not just being free in Christ, but being free period. So we have mm-hmm. books, we read together. We, we are forced to like see ourselves in the text Mm -hmm. and apply it to our own lives and then it's prayer and then we're out so um should we read some heavy hitting books and lisa is a heavy hitting author she's Mm -hmm. written books like forgiving what you can't forget um Mm -hmm. uninvited it's not Mm -hmm. supposed to be this way like she writes and she's not finger wagging like she places herself and her earth shattering life in it Mm -hmm. and um you know if you follow her uh, on social media, she's very transparent, but she's dealt with, like, she's this very public facing figure um, and women's ministry lead um, who has dealt with some very public infidelity in her life, mm. but um, finally making the decision to um, to stand up for herself in that marriage and mm-hmm. Just so many things, but she, yeah, she talks about like some things are just merely inconvenience. Like Mm -hmm. some things just catch you off guard. Like, oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. And then some of these things that we just weren't expecting, right? It's Mm -hmm. really about expectation, the expectation Mm -hmm. of it's not supposed to be this way. Um, And I get like, I'm getting teary because my mom passed away six years ago. And like, Mm -hmm. that wasn't supposed to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but that's based on our own expectation of what we desire mm-hmm. and what we want and what we mm-hmm. prefer and never at all what we are promised, right? Mm-hmm. So the promises are are there, but we were never promised to have parents until yeah. we felt like we didn't need them anymore or mm-hmm. we were okay to live with that. Like none of those are promises. So it's not supposed to be this way centers us always back to like, girl, this was an expectation you had. This was Mm. not a promise. This was Mm. not 
you were not guaranteed this. Mm. And when you sit with that, that's tough. It is heavy. Um, so yeah, that is um <laughs> that is that will make you question your favor, God's faithfulness, mm. um, his goodness. Like, is he as good as we be singing about? Is he as good as we be talking about? Is he as good and is he still good if my expectations aren't met? Not if mm-hmm. his promises aren't kept. Mm-hmm. Right? Because it's that's never been a question. He's going to keep his promises. And so I'm, I'm good to sing about him keeping his promises. But am I still okay to sing about his goodness if he doesn't meet my expectations? Yikes. Yeah. How entitled are you? You are not you are his creation, right? And that's kind of mm-hmm. what it forces you back into. No, And this is just, of course, what I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and we all believe something different. But if God is what you believe, and this kind of book is something that you've been grappling with his goodness and his faithfulness and his, his um, omni-everything, this, right? Mm-hmm. Like his mm-hmm. sovereignty. Um, I highly recommend any read by Lisa. Um, but certainly this one, because nice. I think each of us is grieving something, mm-hmm. whether it's the loss of a loved one um, or the or the loss of expectation. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, you know, both um, can exist. And I think it's a very interesting and you, guys, I promise we're going to get to Big Maggot Chick here in no, a second. What um, <laughs> what's happening? I promise we're going to get there. Um, I think it's a really interesting, you know, correlation. And, and as readers, we can read things for the most part that we may not necessarily 100% connect with or agree mm-hmm. with, but that we can take out some of those nuggets. So even for listeners that are not in the Christian faith or God centered or any of that. Cause on, you know, just full transparency, I'm still trying to figure out where I fall in on that spectrum. A hundred percent. Something like this though, still speaks to people who may not believe in the same God or, you know, you know, whatever their, their faith is, because I believe that the meat of it, the message of it, the helpfulness of it, the connection of her saying, like, I get it. Me too. Like I've lived through some things that this was not supposed to go that way. And just handing some, I don't know, cause I haven't read it, but potentially these books have, have an opportunity to hand some perspective, to hand some, um, thoughts and consideration and just to really help pull the mask off of that moment or that thing that you're going through um, to really mm-hmm. kind of help you along your healing journey. So um, I really, you know, encourage, I, like I said, I'm going, you got, y'all can come back and check up on me. I'm going to be, you know, <laughs> putting this um, on my list here um, just to do some of that healing work, to do yeah. some of that, you know, journey to really help um, navigate. I don't want to say get over because no. I, I, I hate that term. I mean, I don't know if you really ever get over uh, things that we go through in life, but you may grasp at one or two, you know, a couple of things. You may grasp at some understanding. You may come to peace with it. You may understand that in that moment, that was something that was not favorable, but it has helped you in a certain way, whatever it is. Um, so I don't want to use the word get over, but I think it can be a tool that can help us heal along our journey. Certainly. And sometimes it's not about getting over so much as getting through. Like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my mom, Mm -hmm. like I said, passed away. It'll be six years next month. Um, Mm -hmm. and I'm not over that. Mm-hmm. I could burst into tears right now. Right. Um, right. literally could. Her birthday was this past Monday. I could mm. fall to pieces in this moment. So I'm not over that. Um, mm-hmm. but I'm getting through that every single mm-hmm. day that I choose to wake up, mm-hmm. whether I choose to get in the get out of the bed or stay in the bed because I just can't. I'm still getting through it. And it's like 
for any job, any house you build, the more tools you have, right? Could you do it with a hammer and a nail? Certainly. But when you get levelers and I don't know, tools, anything else that you need, <laughs> drills, right? Like right, the when drills, you get extra, the automatic the man. drills, when you yeah. have more tools in that toolbox, how, um, how much more skillfully, I don't want to say easily, but how much more skillfully are you able to navigate that job when you yes. have more tools? Yes, 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 yeah. yes, agreed. And hugs and kisses and all of the love to you as you're still, Received. you know, on that journey. Um, I haven't personally experienced or been through that, but I can't imagine, um, you know, what that is like and what that feels like. So just sending yeah. you all of the love and to any of the listeners out there who are dealing with grief or any of that. Um, I've seen quite a few of my friends go through losing parents at a very young age, um, and what that, you know, what that journey is like. So just know hugs, kisses, love, and accepting and loving on you where you are in the moment. Like I, you know, like I said, it hits, I know I've seen it hits at random, sometimes unfavorable times and just knowing that it's okay. Yeah. It is okay. That makes me mad because I'm sitting on brilliant book ideas. I have two books that have been in my brain and heart for years. And I'm like, is that all I got to do is like make my point and then keep making it? Yes. Okay. So little tidbit. And to anyone out there who's listening, I just discovered that this, you know, that this was, but do you follow Lovey? online I do. I so do you know she lovey. has her and i might in the moment be messing up the name of what this is called it'll be in the show notes the correct name and link if i get it wrong but she has like her book academy where she is helping other specifically women create yeah. and write their books that have been within them. And so I, you know, I, I don't necessarily have a book idea, but I just, I love the book community. So I've been listening and watching as she's talking about this subject and just planting the little seed here of you might want to, you know, kind of explore and kind of watch some of her stuff on what she's doing, because yeah. I do think everyone has a story worth telling. Yep. Regardless of whether, you know, you think or not, you have a concept, you have an idea, you have something that you have learned and yep. it is going to be helpful to someone else. A hundred percent. And that comes out in the work that I do with my clients. That's really yeah. laced throughout. But yeah, I've been following this. Um, I can't remember what what the program is called, but I have, I'm on her email list. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten that prompt a couple times. And the only reason I haven't gone through with that yet, it's the book Academy. The book Like the only reason I haven't gone through with the book Academy yet is because I have 511 things that I'm focused on right now, Yes, but it is saved and pinned and ready for me. I was like, I can go to my save folder right now and see, because it's (laughs) saved. Um, that is on my to-do list. Yes. Yes. That yes, is on yes. my to-do list. Thank you. Yes. I just want to give you that little tad bit of encouragement you. that, you know, it's, it just start it, start the process. It may be a five year process. It may be a yeah. six month to a year process, but start the process. And to anyone else out there who's listening, um, we all have very important stories. I, I do not believe that we were put on this earth, whether, regardless of what you believe, we are not here to just be here and to leave. We nope. are here to impact each other, to help lift each other up. We thrive in and do great in community. Um, yeah. And so how, whatever your contribution is to community, I think is, is important. And I think Spike Lee said this, and again, if I get this wrong, <laughs> the correct quote in okay. tag is going to be in this show notes, but I believe Spike Lee said every time or something of the sort where every time a person passes away, it's like a library is closing and it's because they're passing away with st- untold stories, with untold experience. And I, and I think Ooh. he was specifically talking about our elder black ancestors. Yeah. Um, but so much is lost 
that we do not have written records of. I mean, we're just finding out some truths about things in history. So if we take a moment to write down our experiences and our lives and things as we're going through them, the generations to come can look back at these written records of what it was like to be a millennial living through all of these world crises, right? <laughs> like, yeah, who's totally. going to write that story or who's going to, you know, write the story of being, you know, a black female entrepreneur building her business in 2023. So I'm going to yeah. step off my soapbox and, and no, come back down beautiful. to it. <laughs> That was beautiful. Yeah, I think um, it's definitely worth pursuing. And last point, we're going to go into the last round. We'll, you know, make sure everyone knows where to find you and the services you offer. Um, But to that, I also think that it's okay to close chapters. Yeah, that persistence piece does have an end date. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's okay to close chapters in function or, or... pivot to something else. So, you know, and for example, with me during COVID, I couldn't be planning events. Like I had literally just launched my business and COVID happened. So I couldn't be (laughs) planning events. I had to pivot and figure something out. I started offering launch strategy, did launch strategy for two years. And for the time being, that's paused because that we could talk about this all day, but I don't like the majority of, like you said, how launches are going host, you know, got to have that freebie and then host, um, the four five, six, seven, eight lives and, you know, get people on phone and use this tactic and, you know, doors closing, no, for real doors closing. Like I didn't like the framework I was seeing. And so I took a step back and said, you know what, this isn't an alignment right now. So we're going to pause how I may use that in the future. I have no idea. Um, Could I potentially do a one-off project here and there? Absolutely. But I think also part of that is understanding when it might be time to pivot and shift into something else. Um, And knowing that those gifts and talents and strengths are still there and they might just be needed in a new capacity. (sighs) That the pivot is real. And I think for me, I've, I've evidenced and experienced that in my life, um, in my business in particular, in, well, in my, in my professional life by going where it feels good Mm -hmm. and I go where it feels good based on, there's these, this concept of five clues to talent that allow us to kind of identify where we have talent, um, Mm -hmm. through these various clues. And one of the clues is satisfaction. So the thing that makes you feel like I can't wait to do that again. And, um, you know, going to Jamba Juice, I, (laughs) as a freshman in college, there was never a day where I was like, I can't wait to do that again. I can't wait to serve Mm -hmm. customer smoothies again. But where I was going to work and feeling that is where my career and then my major and then my future like career experiences led me. And I just kept following that Mm -hmm. because very rarely do you have satisfaction where you don't also have some talent. And so that's not to say that everything again is going to be monetizable. Everything needs to be followed, but where I stop feeling satisfaction, like with the roller skates, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. um, Unless I feel this other clue to talent, which is yearning. It's almost like, it's like a, like a, like a, a, gravitational pull they call it the wisdom of the body like i feel a desire an attraction to these types of activities more than others so i know what i feel attraction to and it's pilates (laughs) and it's (laughs) sitting on the couch and talking and having conversations like this i don't feel an attraction to um or i don't go to the things that i don't feel yearning towards and that doesn't mean don't you have to balance your checkbook and don't you have to clean out the pantry yeah and when i do i leverage my strengths to make those things be more um easeful for me Mm -hmm. right um and that just i think that that ties those things back in together like persistence has a cutoff point but paying attention to where you feel satisfaction and yearning <clears throat> can help you can help guide you in that decision making because you can't do all the things right all at once right right oh absolutely book that 
you've seen everywhere, but you are not interested in reading. It's that book by Glennon Doyle, Untamed. <sighs> I see it everywhere and people are on fire for it. And I'm just like, what is that even about? <laughs> And I know that probably makes me sound like I live under a rock, but I'm just like, no, I don't know. <clears throat> seeing everybody with it does not make me want to grab it. Have you read it? Yeah. I haven't. I've read her first one, Love Warrior. Um, and that was, or, you know, it, it was fine. Um, I didn't hate it. Didn't like absolutely love it. And, you know, that was more mm-hmm. about like her mm-hmm. things that were going on with her marriage and everything. And now in untamed you know she's divorced and she has a new partner and all of that but i don't know exactly what mm-hmm. it's about oh and the, so and it not just to didn't, compare it did not mm-hmm. to compare glenn doyle to um anyone because i i adore her i adore following her the other book that i've always had a very strong aversion to and would never even consider um touching is girl wash your face I can't, I shouldn't even say it like that. Girl, wash your face by, um, Rachel Hollis. Is that her name? Yeah. That is a book that that is her name. I like so hide it. I read I that hide in it when I go to the store. 2018. You hide it. Behind other stuff. <laughs> so I read that in like 2018 and then I read her girl, stop apologizing. There was, you know what? And I'm just going to say this. There was a time in the past, let me be clear in the past where I was all in on Rachel Hollis, which is really funny. Cause I don't like, you know, the cheerleader, mm-hmm. rah, 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 like, yes, you can do it. Go, go, go. I was all in on Rachel Hollis at that time. I believed like the reason I wasn't successful is because I'm not getting up at 5. AM doing my 30 minute workout. Like she suggests. And you know, of, of course, since then, um, some <laughs> truths and some understanding and things have come out and, <clears throat> you know, I've, I've been awakened. Uh, <laughs> to some of the stuff and yeah I I I agree that is not and and even before before the stuff before the stuff (laughs) as a black woman who used to be a black I've literally been washing my face since I was six years old whatever that metaphorically Mm -hmm. means to someone is like there's never been a time in my life where I haven't had to be aware and awake and, and present and striving and just, I just have never resonated with that. Wash my face, girl. All right, guys, that is where we are going to end the episode today. I want to give another shout out and special thanks to Chanel for for joining me in this podcast episode. Again, this turned out to be such a impactful and great conversation. I always appreciate when guests take the time to sit down and share with us. One quick note here that going forward, the episode transcripts will be available in the show notes. So you can click the link to view those transcripts. And don't forget, new podcast episodes release every Monday. So make sure you come back soon. All right, guys. Bye. Hey there, one last thing before you leave. Are you looking for a group to read and chat about books with? I'd love to have you join us for our next buddy read of The Personal Librarian. We'll be having a virtual meetup to discuss this book on Sunday, January 14th. Trust me, it's always a good time and we'd love to have you join. All of the details can be found in the show note below on how you can join us for this buddy read over on the Geneva app. As a reminder, all books mentioned in this episode can also be found in the show notes. Thanks so much for joining us and wishing you a wonderful reading adventure until we meet again. Chat soon.